how to create drool-worthy food content with Stephanie Manzanelli. <laughs> Right, Steph, you know a thing or two about content creation. Just ask her 750,000 followers on social media. Yeah, so she is known as uh, that vegan babe. And I want to know, I want to talk to you about what you might be doing if you were not that vegan babe. Because you had another career in your mind before you got into content creation. What was that? Yeah, so before I was actually going to be a firefighter and then a wedding singer on the side. And I was studying. Are you serious? Yeah. A wedding wedding singer and a firefighter? Yeah, because firefighter, the schedules are so, like, sporadic. There's so much free time. But then That's once. That's amazing. Co- Thanks. Yeah, I was excited. But then once COVID happened, yeah. I had nothing to do. So I just started creating food content and all these recipes and it really took off so it was a nice pivot and I'm very grateful it happened because I like this way better <laughs> that's a huge pivot but also the fact that you just started this before COVID and you have all those followers that means like she's got some tips people definitely right 100%. so <laughs> is it just you or do you have a team that helps you with your content creation? yeah so it's been just me from the beginning just me and my cell phone and the thing about nowadays is our camera capabilities on our cell phone are crazy like it's just as good as an entry-level DSLR camera So that's really all you need if you're trying to grow your social media page or you have a small business. You can really get away with just using your cell phone. So this is the stuff that I use. You could get away with one tripod, but I like using uh, an overhead tripod. That's really good for food shots for overhead. There's also a little tripod you could use to get in a little bit closer. And then I also, depending on the shoot, I'll use like different food props or like bowls and cutlery and stuff just to give a little bit of interest. And then this is one of my favorite tools is this photography backdrop. It's just yeah. super lightweight and easy to use, but you could also, if you want like a more budget-friendly version, you could go to a tile store and just get some of their leftover tiles because they're really cheap. They, they'll usually sell them to you for really pennies on the dollar. I think that that is so amazing because it's such an inexpensive thing, but it makes a huge difference in your in your photography. And for sure. You will see an example of that uh, in a moment. So we're going to start by taking the best food pick. Ooh, yes. Okay, what do we need to know about taking a really good food pick? Yeah, so I'm going to show you today some pictures of the lemon blueberry pancakes and the curried mm. red lentil, curried carrot and red lentil soup. Okay. And when you're taking the best food pick, the first and most important thing always is lighting because yes. if you don't have good lighting, you were just not going to get a good shot. And for me, I personally love using natural lighting for food photography. Mm -hmm. I think it just makes the colors look so much nicer. The shadows look better. It just looks more realistic. And also natural lighting, it makes you more relatable to your audience, you know, as opposed to using like a softbox or artificial lighting. It looks like it was filmed in a studio, you know what I mean? Uh, So, and for social media, that's really important, right? The relatability aspect. Totally. So I have some examples here. Okay. This is with bad lighting. This is just like in my kitchen with overhead lights. And you can see it's just so flat and boring and the shadows it's just very bleh yeah. right and then this is like the overhead pot lights or whatever whatever exactly. you might have in your kitchen exactly and then this is one with the sun so the sun so is just nice. coming from the left the colors are so much more vibrant there's beautiful shadows and it just looks so much more appetizing and this yes. is really easy to accomplish at your house you just need to go to a big beautiful window with the best sun exposure and set up there and then you can take your shot from so let's say the sun is here you can mm-hmm. take your shot from behind mm-hmm. or from from either side. You just don't want to be going in the direction of the light because that's just going to make it all look very flat. Right. So you don't want the light behind you. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Yes. Or you're not going to see anything. It'll be totally blown out. So your next tip for us if we are taking like pro food picks is what? is composition yes. so you want to make sure you have a nice composition and just props and ingredients in your background because it just adds so much more interest so yeah. it's really not that not that complicated like i usually just get some ingredients that i have used in the recipe i like adding little crumbs and bits and bobs here to kind of draw like leading lines to your dish so and good. you can use uh different types of props like cutlery cutting boards knives yeah. you just want to make sure that whatever you're using is relevant like i'm not going to put a banana in the back <laughs> of this carrot soup yeah but it's got to make sense <laughs> exactly. like it has to make sense so all of those things go into the shot and then look at the difference it's a huge difference it's like a whole new it's a whole different yeah. ball game right like this just looks so much more professional 
original and it's actually really easy to accomplish as well. Just put some stuff Beautiful. in the corners. I love that. And that's it. Okay, so what else do we need to be uh, thinking about? Editing. Editing. Editing can make a huge, huge difference. Like you can yes. see it in these photos here, an unedited versus an edited photo. Look at the brightness on that. So much brighter, so much more vibrant. It just yeah. pops. It's so much more appealing and appetizing. And I would much rather eat this bowl yes. than that bowl. Okay, can you show us how you actually edit? Yeah, for sure. So you can really use edit any editing software. You could even use like the photo app on your phone or even some social media platforms have editing capabilities. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you using this app here. So we're going to edit this soup. It's, it takes 15, 20 seconds. So the first thing I always look for is increasing the brightness. So to do that, I like to get rid of Ooh. some of the shadows yeah. and then play around with the whites and the blacks. And when you're just getting started, something you can do is scrub all the way to the left and all the way to the right, just to kind of see what each of those settings do. Right. And then you'll kind of get the hang of it. So first I like to brighten it up and then I'll go into the colors uh -huh. and I'll go to each individual color. So first I'll start with the red and I'll increase the saturation and the luminance. And then I'll show you here. So the orange, so what I'm doing here is increasing the saturation, but see how that's very flat? Yeah. What you also want to do is increase the luminance. See how much brighter oh. that makes it? It really like brings it to life. So I'll go and do that that's with, cool. yeah, that's a nice little hack mm -hmm. that most people don't know about. And most people wouldn't know to go in and do it color by color, but the good For thing sure. about doing that is you're not just putting a wash on the whole picture because exactly. that takes something away from it as well. For sure. I like so doing smart. it color by color because it just makes, you want, the thing with editing is you don't want to overdo it, yeah. right? A lot of people do that and the colors are just so vibrant and it doesn't look like real food anymore. Right. So less is more with editing always. And that's why I also like, uh, recommend that people don't use filters yeah. on social media platforms because it can really distort the hues. Yeah, you don't want it to look like a cartoon. Steph, thank you so much for that. That's a great, you know what I mean? That's a great lesson. I love that.